All right, we are here back again for another episode of the Real Estate Mogul MD. And I have a very special guest here today. And we're going to talk about a few things that uh, kind of may keep us from getting into real estate or may be the reason why we do so well in real estate. And it's all coming down to what's happening inside of our mind. So I am excited to welcome today's guest and break this down and let's get right into it. Zanup, thank you for your time and welcome to the show. Hey, Brett. Thank you so much for inviting me, taking the time and arranging that meeting. I appreciate it. Yeah, so I'm I'm really excited. And um, just tell the, the listeners just a little bit about your background um, and kind of where you're at now. And we're going to tiptoe into real estate and get a little... Uh, mix of where your background blends with uh, our direction in real estate. Um, I hope that we can tie into it. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. I, I, I think my journey is a quite a right uh, coming from Turkey. I'm originally from Turkey, an immigrant, uh, moved to the United States. Um, I think since moving to US, I have seen a lot of opportunities in this country. This is the you know country of opportunities. Um, at the same time, I think my heart was more into service, serving other people. Um, that's why I just started, you know, uh, being more involved in psychology and human behavior. Actually, initially I started my major as an architect major. Um, oh, no I kidding. always had interest in uh, making things more beautiful than yeah. how I find them. That's kind of my goal as well, like with, you know, with buildings, with people at times. It definitely based on what they fit into and how their you know culture or background you know allows them to it's more like a customized rather than you know one fits for all which is actually uh, i'm very interested in like customized way of trading things and then later on i realized and definitely some research as well the real estate is as risky as it looks it's actually one of the safest investments um, in a way, I kind of felt like I'm being pushed there again. Because yeah. a lot of times, I think in my life, what I have seen uh, is like you have a call and then you just have to take that call. Otherwise, you're going to miss that call, right? So I think even my journey with real estate has started with that kind of a call as well. I'm, um, and so um, from the professional you know, field to moving to real estate, I feel like that was somewhat, I was led into it um, and I'm still like trying to find my uh, in that field actually. Tell us a little bit about your real estate experience so far. Uh, so upon having my own private practice, uh, things started going well um, and then um, your, you know, your income in increases. Um, and you have to find other ways to make investments, but also be able to serve people. So I think anytime I initiate something, initiate some sort of business, let's say, um, I do have a very intentional approach, which is, okay, how am I going to serve other people with this business? Uh, so that's actually how it started off. Um, I purchased um, a real estate, you know, um, a, a single family house um, and then like rent it out uh, for, for long term. And then later on, um, it became more like that long term was somewhat um, like very, like very regular, very like, um, I guess, median kind of a way that was not, I guess, uh, volatile enough for me in a way where I'm like, you know, needing to include my own uh, aspects into it. So I got involved into short term leasing. Mm -hmm. uh, so with the short term leasing, uh, things become a little bit more active and people really need that short term leasing uh, houses, residences, um, rather than like, I guess, like nowadays more than hotel. A lot of people are coming together as a family. So I kind of find a little bit space for myself in that area. And I liked it. The hospitality, um, you know, I think um, every business has their own 
characteristic veil, her, you know, presenting themselves. Yeah, I, I, I like the control and commitment. I, mm -hmm. I, do, I do agree with like that, yeah. the 3C, but sometimes that the control, uh, I guess delegating has to shift for me at this point, for my, you know, way of handling things, delegating things. Um, because let's say that you, you have like 100% um, effort. Um, and and then you hire like two people, even though those pe two people have like 50% the effort that you, you will do. provide, yeah. you still have 100% effort of yeah. yourself and you still keep your 100% effort to something else that you want to do. Yeah. So I think um, having to do a business kind of help to learn to be able to delegate as something mandatory again because i feel like when i get into something some kind of a business uh, or something that is like you know beyond my uh, comfort zone um you don't go back you just have to like keep pushing yeah. and then be uncomfortable just don't tap out and just like keep pushing um, and then that's how kind of you i guess break your uh, rigid points and become a little bit more flexible and bendable yeah. um, so I think control piece and like you know delegating is somewhat you know has uh, shifted meaning along the way for me uh, in that experience and then later on like when I was talking with my clients you know like understanding like you know the finances and the concepts of money uh, for some people I realize it's power Mm. Uh, well, uh, that shift, right? Okay, like, oh, safety. When you're having a safety mindset about money, then it's like you want to hoard the money. You don't want to invest the money. You don't want to, like, you know, delegate anything. You're very rigid with the money, right? Uh, but when you have that power dynamic, it becomes a little bit more like you are able to delegate or you are able to hire people or you are able to, um, I guess, uh, include yourself in a management. I, I, I actually still don't know what, how you're like, you know, um, uh, sponsoring or organizing clinicians or physicians. Um, um, I, I think you're like, you know, uh, you don't, you're like, you know, uh, uh, responding to a, to a big need. Um, but a lot of times with those professions, because they are so uh, much learning life almost in school, uh, money a lot of times may not come from a perspective of an entrepreneurial, you know, uh, way of understanding money. Uh, so I think that shift was a very big challenge for me. But you as the real estate agent or me as the, you know, clinician, I need to pick up those clues and having those dynamics of like clue picking. Okay, that's my client's need. And then bringing up a different picture, bringing up a vision that is more beautiful, um, creating a story that is more empowering is, I think, way to go in relationship dynamics. So you're going back, you set beside this person, similar path as you, not you. What would you tell them? Um, I would tell, be vigilant and be aware of your surrounding. Because a lot of times opportunities are out there, always. And we pass by some of them, we see them, but we don't pay attention to them. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess just really being vigilant and being tender uh, can come with a lot of opportunities presented to you. 